Hello and welcome back. We are in the top eight of the Gauntlet of Greatness. Take a look at the brackets. We played four groups of four. We played round robin. The decks on the top of each pairing are the group winners. The decks on the bottom were the runners up at the group stage. We're going to play that bottom right matchup. So a Tarka Red against Fairies is what we've got queued up for you. Tarka Red is the newest standard deck in the field. Every deck in the field was legal and standard at some point. This one was legal and standard a couple of months ago. Uh, meanwhile, Fairies peaked in standard in 2008. Well, it was also pretty good in 2009, but we're playing the era of standard when you got to play with Ancestral Vision in your Fairies deck. So here you see Ancestral Vision, you see Thoughtseize. Uh, the permission, the cheap permission is not very good. It's just Rune Snag, but you do get Cryptic Command up at the top of the curve. Um, Bitter Blossom is obviously the, the dream of what you want to play on turn two. Uh, we had been playing with a Scion of Una version of the Fairies list, but it just wasn't as good as good old Vendillion Click. And we've kind of unmetagamed the deck. We've sort of built the generically powerful version of the Fairies deck rather than the one that was, that was okay when your opponent was going to be playing Bitter Blossom all the time. Still got Mistbinds and some Creature Kill, and we'll see. I mean, deck looks very powerful, but speaking of very powerful... This Atarka Red deck is just fast. I mean, I think you forget sometimes how ridiculous this deck is because Standard, like, it recently has always kind of morphed around, well, you know you might be playing against a red deck, so everybody just has put a priority on cheap removal. But look at this Zergo Bell Striker. We had Iron Claw Orcs in the Gauntlet of Greatness. Like, the Sly deck from the 90s paid two mana for this guy, and he didn't even have Dash, right? You've got solid removal. You've got Monastery Swift Spirit, who's got to be just one of the most hard-hitting one-drops in the history of the game. Um, Abbot of Carol Keep also has prowess. And, of course, the big combo, Teamer Battle Rage and Become Immense can just insta-kill over the top of almost anything. So I this is another one of these matchups where I haven't seen these two decks play against each other before. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. It's kind of like I've got the deck with removal that's going to try to stay untapped and react to what you're doing. And you're just going to be trying to attack into me. I don't know. What do you think, Shadow? Uh, I've got the whole... The, the combo is going to be a bit of a problem to get through you with. Um, but I certainly come out fast and deal a lot of damage. So um, if you do have to tap out, then I think things might go well for me. Otherwise, I think I'm, I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure. I think I'm going to try to force you to tap out. I think you're going to have to. And hopefully I'll be able to respond when that happens. Ultimately, I don't know who's supposed to win. Um, yeah, no, I'm much I'm less either. sure. I'm much less sure about this match than I was the last one. I'm uh, genuinely yeah. curious to see as well. So I get a match hosted. All right. Come fight me. Good luck. I will talk to you after the match. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't know that he can actually force me to tap out. Like, my whole deck operates at instant speed, mostly. Bitter Blossom seems hard for him. Bitter Blossom forces him to combo me, and then I just sit on, like, terror, right? God, this draw seems insane. Though I am on the draw. Or, like, it's turn one vision, turn two bitter blossom, and then I just never tap out again. And I'm sitting on a terror to break up his combo. Yeah, I like my chances. Alright, Swiss Spear is annoying. Is this draw really not going to be fast enough? Surely, turn one Ancestral Vision into turn two Bitter Blossom is good enough for standard. Surely. That helps. Cinder Glade tapped. Mm. Ow. Look, I'm playing Bitter Blossom, right? I have to play Bitter Blossom. I can't not play Bitter Blossom, can I? I guess I could skip Bitter Blossom to leave up Terror? Is that possible? I'm at 14? I 
I mean, the thing is, my late game is in pretty good shape. My late game's in great shape now. Like, I can just... If I play Bitter Blossom, I'm going to be damaging myself. I'm going to do, like, what, five damage to myself at least? Maybe more, including I'm, I am... I'm vulnerable to a Battle Rage kill on the spot. Yeah, I am not going to play Bitter Blossom. Like, I'm going to win the long game off these Ancestral Visions. I'm just going to be up so many cards, I can start playing Vidillion Clicks and hitting him with stuff. Oh, I should have rune snagged that. Probably should have rune snagged that. I definitely should have rune snagged that. That was bad. So he doesn't have a land. Huh. Definitely a punk. I should have rune snagged. I mean, the good news is I get to rune snag something next turn, but like, I guess I'm gonna tear the abbot to leave up rune snag and take the one. I guess. Yeah, I think this is better. It does it hits harder long term? Right? It's the same damage next turn, and I start turning a profit, assuming the game lasts more than next turn. Okay, untapped land allows me to have a click rune snag, or I can suspend ancestral. I want the untapped land. Am I gonna play Vendillion click? If he does nothing, if he doesn't give me, it's funny. Yeah, it's either ancestral and rune snag, or interesting. I think I go ahead and suspend this Ancestral and leave up a Rune Snag. I also guess there's some value in blocking with Click. No, that leaves me vulnerable. Funny, I could play Click now while he's while he can't respond with a flurry of instants. I want these cards. I'm gonna rely on Rune Snag. <sighs> I like being able to do two things on the same turn. We basically wind up in the same space we would have. My punt has been sort of weirdly undone. Uh, I play the Fairy Conclave. And then draw step click. I think it's draw step click. Definitely want his hand. I mean, I could try to cycle this Bitter Blossom, but I want the info. Wow. 
So it's become immense. It's battle rage. It's dragon fodder. It's bell striker. So if he draws a land, if he draws a fetch land, he's yeah. I mean, he's basically at the combo, which means I'm going to take battle rage away from him because I don't want him to have the double and or the trample. Yeah. All right. We put battle rage on the bottom. So he's got become immense dragon fodder and Zergo bell striker. And he didn't draw a land. I may have drawn him into a land, but I had to, yeah, I drew him into a land. Pretty sure I have to take that Battle Rager for you from him, though. Yeah, I think I'm willing to trade Swift Spear for Become Immense or whatever. Right, he can Become Immense, he can Dragon Fodder. Dragon Fodder does not save Swiss Beer from trading with the click. So we're going to get to block. We're going to get to resolve an Ancestral with nine life left. Yep. He is going wide. Which is annoying. Like everything I have is spot removal. Yeah, if he wants to. Oh, he actually can't sack that for green mana, can he? So this is just a trade. I don't even think he has the option to become immense here. But whatever, I'm trading. Yeah, I just want to trade and draw extra cards. That is the plan. So he's got a Bell Striker and a Become Immense. He's got one card and it's Become Immense. I kind of need to draw a removal spell, don't I? That counts for sure. All right. How do I play this? I don't have anything to champion with the Mistbind click, although I could champion the Bitter Blossom. But I mean, I think... Oh, interesting. I can go Bitter Blossom Terror? Like, I want him to use his Become Immense. So I can either set him up to use Become Immense and then I counterspell that plus Bounce a Goblin, or I commit the Bitter Blossom. I play Bitter Blossom Terror, setting up next turn to be Mistbind Click. I think I like that better. I guess the thing is, if he doesn't cast his become, if I play for Cryptic Command, and he just doesn't cast Become Immense into my five untapped mana after resolving an Ancestral, then I have to take four, which is really bad. So I think I have to do something at least a little bit proactive. Well, this means I'm taking a damage from my Terror, but he doesn't have a ton of reach without hitting me with creatures, so I'm going to play it this way. Yeah, I don't think I can afford to give him the option to just hit me for four. Great. Now, I, no, now cryptic command, cryptic command wouldn't have stopped that anyway. So, because I still have to live in fear of become events. He finds an abbot, which he does not have the ability to cast. So, no advantage gained. I have this anyway. Oh, I can end step to it. So he's hitting me for four. He's got a become immense in his hand that he casts. So if I kill this, then become immense swings down. That's bad. So I guess I do have to take this four.
So if I click upkeep, then I have two blockers for three creatures. If he draws a if he draws green mana, he can become immense the unblocked creature and I just lose. I think I have to play it that way though, don't I? Yeah, I think I have to play it that way. If he wants to respond to the click with his become immense, then I know who to chump block, obviously. Particularly interested in taking more damage to Bitter Blossom. All right, he does not respond. So if he draws a land, I'm screwed. A green. It has to be a green land, though. Oh, are you serious? Are you serious? God. And the thing is, if I don't play the Mistbind click, then I'm just sitting on Cryptic Command. He goes attack, attack, attack. I trade. He's just like, hit you for three, right? I'm a block. I have to move first. I don't see how I was going to get around this. I have to move first, or he's just going to hit me for three. And then if once I move first, he's... I mean, I guess I could have done tap all creatures. I could have Cryptic to tap all creatures, but... Then I'm I'm taking Bitter Blossom damage. Now I think getting a 4-4 flyer here was correct. I don't regret my plays, but yeah, I had to fade green mana that turn. Ugh. Damn. Bottle gnomes. Yeah, I just didn't want to use my cryptic to tap his creatures because I felt like getting a 4-4 flyer, it, like, I would have survived that turn. But I don't have a 4-4 flyer on the table, and then I'm just, I'm back in the same situation on the next turn. Like, I'm in exactly the same situation on the next turn, except, yeah, it's basically identically the same situation on the next turn, except he might have drawn a creature, and he may have gone wider. Like at the beginning of combat is maybe better. Yeah, maybe click at the beginning of combat is better than the way I played it. Huh. Click is not particularly good in this matchup, is it? No, it just isn't. I have to survive to like Razor Main Masticore or something? Razor Main Masticore seems great. Do I need Damnation? Wow, how do I build my deck for this matchup? Like, I need to kill all those creatures, is what it comes down to. I need to kill all those creatures. I need to survive. Thought sees his value for getting the combo out of his hand, but I don't know that that's... I mean, the life clearly matters. Weird. I think I'm going to play it this way. Let's see what happens. Match removal.
Damnation, and I have three lands, none of them produce black. That's less than ideal. I do like Bottle Gnomes, I do like Razor Mean Masticore, but wow. No black mana. Stupid Pendlehaven. Huh. Yikes. This hand's not winning. Too awful. Oh my god. I think I have to keep this. I mean, it's got bottle gnomes, and if I can... I get a scry and a draw step to find black mana. But I think bitter blossom's definitely better on the play. Ugh. I mean, I would like you, Terror, but I have to find black mana. I did shave one bitter blossom. Damn. Sigh. I may look like Bottle Nose matches up well against that card, but I don't think it actually does. I mean, I guess I force him to blow an instant, and then I gain three life on the trade. Okay, he was happy blowing that instant anyway. Interesting. Three one ones. So I can block sack. I don't think that's right. Not with three one ones there. We need to start blocking the one ones. Sure. I am willing to trade Mutavault for Abbott. I'm also willing to trade Mutavault for just soaking up a turn of damage. Is he going to kill it before I can even block with it? It's going to kill it before I can block with it. Depressingly well played on his part. Now, I have to decide if these bottle gnomes are better off killing a goblin or blocking and sacking. If I kill the goblin, I take six. But I'm being attacked by one less. So it's like I'm saving at one damage a turn for the indefinite future, or I can say four now, so it takes me three turns to turn a profit. That doesn't, that sounds like forever. I think I have to do it this way. No idea if this deck is built reasonably for this matchup. No idea if I sideboarded it correctly for this matchup. But at least it's playing itself. It's kind of playing itself on autopilot. Yeah, Tarkus Command is the card I'm living in fear of. If he's got four cards left in his hand. If one of them is a Tarkus Command to give the whole team plus one, plus one, we ju we're just going to lose. I, I, like, last game, I thought I was, I thought I was going to win last game. 
And then I thought it was legitimately very close and interesting. This game, I feel like, if he has anything, we're just dead. Sad. Oh, it's got summoning signals. I can't activate it anyway. There it is. I can't use it for mana to activate the other one because it's got summoning signals. I guess I try to trade for the Abbot. This has me taking five. Tarkus Command. Oh, it's just become immense. To deal six extra damage and save Abbott from this fight with Mutavolt. Sure, no problem. I'll just take 11. <laughs> wow. By 11, I actually meant I'll take lethal. Good game, sir. Well, that was close. <laughs> like I said, I just want you to tap some mana so I can do some things. I thought I was going to win the first game. I top decked the forest. I'm a good player. Yeah, no, I played it such that the only chance you had was to top deck green mana. But mm -hmm. it's possible if I play my click during... I mean, if I play my click during your combat step, then I don't lose to the top deck forest. But I do give you the ability to play whatever else you draw. Like, I don't... I did it my way of playing it on upkeep because I didn't want to let you play your creature or your hordling outburst or your whatever you drew. Right. Which... Yeah, I don't regret my plays. I just, like, I had those... I felt like I was trading cards. I had those Ancestral Visions ticking down. I wasn't taking much damage from Bitter Blossom. Like, I don't know. It was a really close game. Mm -hmm. you know, no, the first game I did, I actually thought that you had me. I was like, okay, I've, you've got me down to nothing. Yeah, you basically, you top deck to beat me. That's basically yeah, yeah, yeah. what happened. I top deck to beat but, you. But, I mean, the second game, you just completely crushed me. And to be fair, that first game where you top deck to beat me, I'm like stabilizing on two. Like, you can top that right. burn spell down the road and catch me tapped out. Like, yeah. I do have a counter spell in my hand. I have cryptic command, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good So, spell. yeah, I, I just decided to sideboard wide. I put more of the uh, things that put goblins into play. So I had all four of them of the three casting house ones. And I drew two of them, so... I did bring in damnation, so, I mean, I was probably sideboarded correctly, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think you're probably favored in that matchup. Looked close and interesting. Both our matches today were close and interesting. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. Cool.